What's up KDVAS and welcome back to another tutorial. This video is for this round puff sleeve bodice top. This is one of those experimental projects that I just figured this along as I went. This I shared how to make the sewing patterns from scratch, how to cut and sew it all together. I used this print that I used for a pair of shorts from last year and I thought it just made a really cool cord set. The way I've styled it together. I work with Ankara print and raw silk for the sleeve. So if you want to see how I put this blouse all together, make sure to keep on watching. To sew this blouse, I'm going to be working with this Ankara print that has purple, reds, brown and blues. I used this for a pair of shorts last year and I just thought it would be cool to use the same for this blouse. I'll be pairing it with this purple raw silk. I use it about one and a half meters for the sleeve because of the volume that it has. And side by side, I think they actually worked really, really well together. To enable me get in and out of the blouse, I have this black invisible zip. I believe this is about 20 to 25 inches in length, so it's on the longer side. This I'm going to be putting on the center back of the blouse. I am going to be working with the following measurements to create the sewing patterns. They are listed here on the screen and I always recommend working with yours if you're going to be the one wearing the garment or that of your client if this is for somebody else. Now once you have the measurements out of the way, we can go into making the sewing patterns. I always like to start from my front bodice and work my way backwards because most times I'll be able to duplicate the front pattern to make the back of the bodice or the skirt of the trouser. It just saves me time when it comes to actually creating sewing patterns. Now I've cut myself a big piece of paper and I've just held it down with some pattern weights and I'm starting off with marking the full length of the blouse. My blouse is about 22 inches long so it is above my hip but below my belly button so I can wear it with leggings, with shorts and I could also tuck it into plain trousers if I wanted. Now I'm just going in here to square across the shoulder and the hemline of the top so I have those horizontal points ready for me to mark the other dimensions from. Next up here I'm just marking 3.5 inches down the center front and sideways and then connecting them together to have a round neckline. This neckline is on the high side so if you want yours lower you can mark the depth a little bit lower like 4 or 4.5 inches. Here I'm just going in to mark the vertical distance from my shoulder to my bust and then from my bust to my waist. These are my dimensions. Please work with yours so you have the absolute best fit and the best outcome. I'm just going in here to square those points across. The top line is my bust line and this line I'm drawing in right now is going to become my waistline. Along my bust line, I'm going in here to mark a quarter of my bust measurement plus a quarter of an inch ease. And then along the waistline, I'm marking a quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch waist dart that I'm going to mark and stitch away. And then along the hemline, I'm marking a quarter of my around hem or around hip measurement plus a quarter inch ease. I'm just going in here to connect them together so I have my side seam in place. I'm just connecting the waist point to the hemline first and then I'm going to draw in the sleeve extension and connect that back to my bust line. Now I'm just going in first to mark away my dart. My dart is about one inch wide so I'm marking half an inch halfway through that waistline and I'm drawing a vertical line that divides the entire panel into two like so. The dart starts one inch below the bust line and ends one and a half inch before the hemline. That way I don't lose any measurements along my bust and along my hip or the hem of the garment. So I'm just going in here to connect the points together so I have the commonly known shape drawn in for a dart. Once I have this on my front, it's going to help me create my back patterns a lot easier. The next thing I'm doing here is I'm marking my sleeve length from my shoulder downwards like this. Mine is about 17 inches, but rather than have a straight sleeve, I'm going to be drawing in a puff that goes up from the shoulder point. 
and curves down towards the sleeve. You can make this as exaggerated or as subtle as you want, but adding in that shape there is going to add more volume to the top of the sleeve. The sleeve hem itself is 5.5 inches wide, which when you double would give you 11 inches. It's a little bit loose, but I'd rather have it that way since my fabric does not have stretch. Once I have the hem drawn in and marked, I'm going to be connecting the bottom side to the bust line where it is a little bit straight towards the bottom of the sleeve and then it curves in towards the bust line and I'm going to draw in the rest of my side seam. To allow me add even more volume to the sleeve, I'm going to be dividing the body from the sleeve along this point. So it goes from the shoulder edge to around where the bust line hits the side seam. And along that green line I just drew, I'm going to be tracing off that part and slashing and spreading. But first, I'm going to go into add seam allowance around my entire pattern. This is what my front is looking like. I added my annotations, my green line, and I will be making a copy for my back. The front and the back are very, very similar. The main difference that I did or the main changes I made for the back is the center back has a one centimeter or half an inch seam allowance because now I'm able to add a zip along the center back. Then the center back neckline is 2.5 inches below the shoulder compared to the front that is 3.5 inches. So the neckline is slightly shallower on the back. Everything else is the same. It has a one centimeter seam allowance around and a two centimeter hem allowance along the bottom. It has a dart. The back dart, however, is as tall from the bust line all the way to the same point where the front one ends. So it's slightly taller on top, but it ends around the same point as the front dart. Once I have that out of the way, I'm going to set my back pattern to the side and I'm going to come in to divide that slanted line I drew into evenly spaced. So mine was 12 inches in total. So I just mark three inches point across like this and I'm going to be drawing in a curved line that divides that entire sleeve into panels. This I'm trying to divide it as evenly as possible because that way I'm able to spread the volume across the entire sleeve and not just have it concentrated on one part. Once I have that drawn for the different points I have marked, I'm going to be cutting off the sleeve section. So from the green line along the slashed point and just have it as a separate pattern piece. Using my paper scissors, which I always recommend have a separate pattern and fabric scissors because once you cut paper with the scissors, it starts to get blunt and blunt over time. Now I'm just going in here to slash along those curved lines that I drew earlier on. I'm going to slash all of the lines and then cut out the sleeve pattern so I have it to spread and add volume to. After cutting out the main front piece, I'm going to set this aside and then add a one centimeter seam allowance along the shoulder seam. Then I'm going to get some paper and place it underneath my slashed sleeve pattern. Now I'm going to start spreading from the bottom upwards. So I'm going to tape down the bottom panel so it just holds and secures the pattern in place. I tried to use all the scraps of paper I had. I'm going to be spreading each panel by one inch. Just know that you more, the more you spread the panels, the more volume you will add to that part of the sleeve. And I'm just spreading it along this outer edge like so. I slashed it up until the point that it reached the very edge of the paper, but it's still connected by the bottom of this pattern piece. Once I have all of the panels slashed and spread by one inch evenly across, I'm going to be drawing in a new seam that connects all the panels together. Because of the way the seam is and the curve is shaped, you have to draw in a new seam that has like an even curve connection so when you cut that onto fabric and you stitch it onto your garment it just looks a lot more tidy once i have that new seam drawn in place i'm going in to add a one centimeter seam allowance because that would allow me to sew this onto the other part of the garment once i've drawn that in place i'm just transferring my notch that is going to help me connect panels as well then i'm going to cut out any extra paper that i don't need 
this I'll need to cut two pair off, a pair on the left and a pair on the right side. And it's essentially the same pattern for the front and the back. You don't need to repeat the same thing for the back of the blouse is the same pattern that i'm going to be working with so these are the final patterns that i ended up with i have my sleeve pattern which i don't even know why i forgot to write annotations on but it's a sleeve i need to cut two pairs one for the left and one for the right i have my main front and back which i went in to add seam allowance along that sleeve seam and then the extra pattern I did off screen was the collar pattern. This is 11.5 by 3 inches in dimension. And to get this, I added my front and back neckline. I measured them. I added them together. And that is the length of this particular piece. This I would need to cut on a fold to make the collar of this blouse. So I am done preparing all of the patterns. I've pinned the main body onto the Ankara print and then I think I'll use a plain raw silk for the sleeve. I kept going back and forth on what I should use for what but I think having the print as the body and then the puff sleeve with the like solid color fabric would actually be very cool. It's crazy how I have just one meter of the Ankara. <laughs> you know when God just arranges everything that is meant to be, it is just enough. So I'm going to cut the body, cut the sleeve and join everything together. So with my patterns pinned onto my fabric, I'm just going in here to cut out the main body front and back. I also cut the collar in the print as well. Then I cut the sleeve in the purple raw silk. I had enough to cut both sleeves. I feel like I could have even made the sleeve a little bit longer, but this is a top I'm most likely be wearing in the summer, so I don't want it to be too long. So the three quarter length works perfectly and fine. I also transferred my notches at necessary points because that will just make sewing everything a lot easier. My color piece, I wanted to fuse with some interfacing initially, but I just left it like this because I'm going to be changing up the neckline a little bit. If you haven't subscribed at this point, if you haven't given this video a thumbs up at this point, this is your opportunity to do so. Please leave a like, it helps the channel and the videos perform a lot better. And if you haven't subscribed and turned on your notification bell, please do so as well. Now onto sewing everything together. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm going to be transferring my dart points from my pattern onto the wrong side of my fabric using pins. With the pins in place, I'm going to lift the pattern paper slightly and mark those points with my chalk. This is the type of chalk that comes off when you wash or when you rub off with a damp cloth. So be mindful of that. We're going to be doing a similar technique once I have the points marked on this side, I'm going to be repeating the same thing on the other side of the front of my blouse. Once I have the point marked in place, I'm going to just pin in the dart, especially around the middle section, matching the chalk points that I pinned earlier on. And that way, once I take this piece to my machine, it guides me on how much I am sewing in my dart. I feel like I even stitched in my dart a little bit too much because the waistline was just slightly too snatched for my liking, but it still works, it still fits. So just be mindful of when you are sewing in your dart on your garment. This I'm going to be sewing using a regular straight stitch and doing a reverse stitch at the beginning and at the end. I'm going to repeat the same thing for the back. I have pinned away both that on the left and on the right side of the back of the blouse. And I'm just going in here to sew the back that in such a way that everything is nice and secure. Once I was done sewing the darts, I gave my pieces a nice press to relax all of the stitching and set them aside so I could focus on working on the sleeve of this blouse. Now the sleeve has gatherings, especially along that Point that we slash and spread and we have to first take away those gatherings now the way i'm joining this i feel like i could have done this differently but the way i'm doing it here is i went in to join the top of the sleeve together so i've put right sides together so i have my left and my right sleeve paired up in a way that is ready to be fixed into the armhole of the blouse and i'm just sewing it using a regular straight stitch here first and after stitching it i went and i overlocked this you could do this the other way 
you could join in, you could gather in the sleeve, sew it into the front on the left and on the right hand side, repeat the same thing for the back, and then you join the shoulder seams. So it's kind of like no wrong or right way, but there are two ways that you can do this. Once I have the sleeve pair joined along that top shoulder point with a needle and a thread, I'm just sewing the longest and the loosest stitch I could possibly do. So that way I'm able to gather in the volume and the ease I've added into the sleeve along this entire dimension here. I did this for the left and the right hand side. And once I had that gathered hand stitched going on, I'm just going to pull in the thread so that way I'm able to make really nicely evenly spread gathers. I tried to focus more of the gathers on the top of the sleeve and kept the bottom with less gathers so that way the volume stays on top of the garment or on top of the sleeve now i'm just going in here to pin the sleeve into the front side like this i've pinned bottom to bottom notch points to notch point and the way i joined the top of this sleeve was so sneaky but it worked so i started from this bottom edge like this so pin the bottom of the sleeve to the bottom of this particular side of the back and then along the top, I pinned the front and the back bodies very closely to each other and folded them towards the back of the garment. So as I was sewing the sleeve into that entire arm curve on the front and on the back, I closed up the shoulder seam. Now this would only work if the back and the front shoulder overlaps in such a way that you don't have any raw edges showing. But if you don't want to do it like this, you can do it the way I mentioned earlier on. Both ways work. After sewing in the sleeves into the bodice, I went in to overlock that seam as well as hem the bottom of the sleeve. I did this for the left and for the right sleeve and this is what everything looks like close up. I always like to have tidy insides of my garment even though nobody really sees it. I guess it's just like a pet peeve I have. I don't like to see like raw threads and things dangling on the insides of my garment. But once I was happy with that, I'm going to go in to join the entire side seam of the sleeve and the bodice in one go. I think that's the advantage of doing it like this way when you fit the sleeve before you join the side seam. So with one continuous stitch, I'm going to be sewing the side seam of the sleeve as well as the side seam of the body, overlocked it, gave it a nice press and this is what the piece is looking like. I just love the shape of the sleeve but it reminds me of something my mom would wear with like two wrapper to church but I feel like it's one of those things that depends on how you style it and because I have matching shorts this is going to be a great summer look. The next thing I'm doing here is I'm going to add the collar along the neckline of the bodice. The collar I have folded in half and pressed with the wrong sides together on the insides and I'm going to be joining it along the entire neckline. Now the collar is a little bit loose on the top edge but I'm going to show you guys a trick on how I was able to get rid of that gaping on the outer edge of the collar. Once I have it pinned and stitched into the neckline of my garment. I went ahead to overlock it as well so I have a really nice and clean finish on the inside of my piece. Now this is what the color is looking like. You can leave it like this. This next step is optional but I thought it would be cool to show you guys a great way to get rid of gaping on collars. Now I've cut myself a short slim elastic band and attached a safety pin to one end. I'm going to pass the elastic through like this and pull it out from the other side and then I'm going to move it up until I get to a point that it has eliminated the gaping on the neckline. Sha have the elastic be a comfortable fit around your neck so you don't feel strangled when you have this on and once you are happy with that you can close off the ends of your collar before adding your zip. Along the open center back edge, I'm going to pin in my invisible zip, the left side on the left side and the right side on the right side. And once I have the zip opened and pinned in place, I'm going to be stitching the zip into my center back. I overlocked the edge before stitching in the zip so I don't have to think about finishing that particular edge afterwards. You can also use bias binding. You can also fold it slightly if you have a lot of seam allowance to conceal any raw edge that you have. After I was on sewing in the zip, to finish off the bottom edge, I'm going to match them together along the bottom like this. And then I'm going to be sewing it close 
up until the point that the zip stops. The last and final step to finish up the blouse is I went in to fold and hem the bottom of the blouse but this is what it looks like on the mannequin. It has so much drama, so much va va voom and I love the combination of color. These were fabric scraps I just had in my studio. I didn't want to have to buy new material and it worked together really nicely. I can't wait to rock this, style this and the fact that this print is multicolored. I'll be able to have fun with my bottoms. I could go blue, I could go black, I could wear my matching shorts, whatever I am feeling like. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'll be recreating this, don't forget to tag me on social media as usual at Kim Dave Designs. I would love to see your own recreations as you guys always get really creative with how you recreate projects that we create on the channel. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a comment down below, share your feedback, your thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. And until my next video, have a good morning, afternoon, and evening wherever you are. Bye.